The animation begins five years after the first movie, with the Viking village of Burke now at peace with the dragons and living together. The dragons have moved to Burke Island, and the Vikings have built special cages, a place to eat, dragon washing stations, and even fire suppression devices. The Vikings used to have a tradition of killing dragons, but now it is replaced with dragon racing. Anyone who wants to win this race must collect as many points as possible by putting the sheep into a basket. Astrid is seen here dragon racing with Roughnut, Toughnut, and Fishlegs. In the final round, a black sheep is seen, which has the highest points. As soon as the sheep were released, Fishlegs caught the sheep first, and the chase for the sheep began. Then Fishlegs, who seemed to like Roughnut, gave the sheep to her, but as soon as she got the sheep, Roughnut immediately knocked Fishlegs out. After that, Roughnut and Toughnut fought over the black sheep even though they were siblings until Astrid appeared behind and managed to grab them. Astrid managed to win the match. The scene changes to see Hiccup flying with Toothless through the clouds. When the two of them reach a high altitude, Hiccup freefalls, followed by Toothless. When Hiccup almost touched the water, he opened his wingsuit. Hiccup can fly alone without Toothless' help, and Toothless can also fly alone without Hiccup's help. They both enjoyed flying freely together above the clouds. When they were busy flying, suddenly, there was fog in front of them. Arriving in the foggy area, there were so many rock cliffs that Hiccup almost hit. Luckily there was Toothless, who quickly destroyed the rock and saved Hiccup. But because of that incident, the two fell into the forest, and Hiccup accidentally discovered a new area. Then Hiccup took out his map to draw the new territory. Soon Astrid came and said that she had won the competition. Then Astrid asked why Hiccup wasn't in the race. Hiccup said he avoided his father, who asked him to become the next chief. However, he is still wondering whether to accept it or not. Then Astrid says that protecting Burke village and leading the Vikings is a big responsibility. Hiccup told Astrid that there was something odd about the area, but Astrid, who did not believe Hiccup's words, was finally told to look ahead. From there, they saw smoke rising like a fire, and out of curiosity, they both went there. Arriving there, they saw a forest that had burned down, and there was a very large piece of ice behind the forest. When they were surrounding the ice, someone suddenly attacked and captured Astrid's dragon named Stormfly. Astrid, who fell, was immediately saved by Toothless, and the three approached the group of people. Astrid asked them to release Stormfly, but a man there named Eret thought Astrid and Hiccup were one of the dragon troops who attacked and stole their dragons before destroying their fort. Then Eret told Hiccup that someone like him rode a dragon and freed all the captured dragons. Eret also told Hiccup about their leader named Drago Bloodvist. He told him that Drago forced Eret and his troops to hunt dragons because he planned to enslave the dragons to serve as troops. Hiccup, who realized they were dangerous people, quickly told Toothless to attack them while he would save Stormfly, and they managed to escape from the place along with Stormfly. Arriving at Burke Village, Hiccup immediately met his father because he wanted to ask about Drago. However, Stoic did not respond to Hiccup until Astrid finally appeared to help Hiccup explain. Astrid then told everyone there that someone had captured dragons and enslaved them to be used as troops. Then Hiccup also added that the person's name was Drago. Stoic, who heard that, realized something and immediately left to hide the dragons. Seeing his father's reaction, Hiccup became astonished and asked about Drago. His father said that Drago was a madman, and if it was true that he was forming a dragon army, they also had to prepare for war. Then Hiccup has an idea to return to Arid and follow him to Drago's place, then, he will persuade him not to make war so that peace is maintained. Here Stoic immediately rejected Hiccup's idea. Stoic said that Drago's mind could not be changed and that Hiccup should be more worried about Burke than him. But Hiccup decided to go with Toothless to meet Drago, followed by Astrid from behind. The scene then moves to Eret's ship. He, who saw Hiccup and Astrid flying with his dragon, immediately shot at them with a net. Unexpectedly, Hiccup and Astrid, who landed on Eret's ship, instead surrendered with their dragons and weapons. This made Eret confused, and then Hiccup said that he would persuade Drago and change his mind about dragons. Hearing that, Eret and his troops laughed at Hiccup's idea. Suddenly Snoutlot came and immediately took Hiccup away without knowing Hiccup's real plan. Then the other Vikings and Stoic had also arrived at Eret's ship. There Stoic told Hiccup to go home, but Hiccup refused. Finally, Stoic was forced to tell him the story of his past. Stoic told Hiccup that many years ago, there had been a gathering of chiefs to discuss the dragon attack they were facing. Then came a large stranger wearing a cloak of dragon skin. He introduced himself as Drago Bloodbest. Drago was a man who was determined to free humans from the cruelty of dragons, so he asked all the leaders there to bow down to him. Hearing that all the leaders laughed, an angry Drago immediately laughed and cursed at them. Shortly after that, several dragons appeared and immediately burned the meeting place to ashes, and only Stoic managed to survive. 
Therefore, Stoic told Hiccup to undo his intention because it had a high risk, but Hiccup remained firm in his stance. He is confident in his skills to tame dragons, especially since he also changed his father's mind about dragons after saying that Hiccup left with Toothless. While flying, Hiccup met another dragon rider, but the person was wearing a mask. The dragon rider was the one Eret referred to earlier. Then suddenly, another dragon kidnaps Hiccup and takes him to a place filled with ice chunks while Toothless falls and drowns in an ice lake. After Hiccup was taken down, he said he had to pick up his dragon, but no one responded to his request. Soon Toothless came to be rescued by other dragons. Then the masked person tried to touch Hiccup, and when the person opened the mask, it turned out that she was Hiccup's mother. But Hiccup is confused because he doesn't remember his mother's figure. But then his mother says that no mother will forget her child. On the other hand, Stoic found Hiccup's mask on the ice lake and quickly asked his dragon to track down Hiccup. The scene then moves to Hiccup, who still does not believe that the woman is his mother because all Hiccup knows is that his mother is dead. Then the woman took Hiccup to a place. Arriving there, it turns out that the place is very beautiful, and hundreds of dragons live there as well as a hiding place. His mother then told him that she had lived for 20 years with dragons in that place to study the dragons. Her mother's name is Valka. Her mother did this to save the dragons from Draco. After believing that the woman was his mother, Hiccup told him that his father had changed as well as the Vikings who now accepted dragons and lived with them. But his mother does not believe him and says people cannot change. Then his mother told him a story from when Hiccup was a baby. Back then, when dragons attacked Burke village, one dragon approached Hiccup. Knowing this, Valka almost killed the dragon, but there she saw that the dragon did not hurt Hiccup, and then she realized that dragons were intelligent and soft-hearted creatures. Since then, Valka has fallen in love with dragons and was accidentally taken by the dragon who thought Valka was one of them. After that, his mother introduced Hiccup to the ruling dragon king in this place named Bewilderbeast of the Alpha Species. The dragon has the power of ice and makes nests for them using his ice breath. Toothless looks scared when he meets Bewild, while Hiccup is amazed by him. The scene then switches back to Astrid and her friends worrying about Hiccup. She plans to kidnap Eret to show him Drago's place. On the other hand, Hiccup is invited by his mother to see Bewild feeding the other dragons with fish that he caught from the sea. Bewild's action of feeding the dragons looks like a rain of fish which makes Toothless very happy. After that, Hiccup drew the new place he found with his mom on his map. Then this mother and son began to show their abilities. Here Hiccup shows his ability to fly using his wingsuit. But he and Toothless ended up falling into a pile of snow because the landing was not perfect. Then Valka approached Hiccup there and she was amazed by her son's creation. Valka also realized that Hiccup looked like her. Then Valka apologized for not being by his side all this time. Then Valka began to show the other side of the dragon that she had learned so far. For example, when she held Toothless back, Thorn suddenly appeared on top of his back to the tail. His mother said they could turn the world into a safe place for dragons with their talents. Hiccup agreed, and he also thought he would be able to talk to Drago if he continued to be with his mother, but his mother refused and preferred to protect the dragons. Meanwhile, Astrid had arrived at Drago's place. She saw that the place was filled with many ships, and something in the water made her very curious. Suddenly Drago's troops attacked Astrid and her friends from behind, and they were all brought before Drago. There a dragon Hookfang who tried to fight Drago was easily tamed. Astrid, who saw this became angry. Astrid, who had already been caught, intended to scare Drago by saying that her tribe would know she was kidnapped and would immediately find her because they had a tracking dragon. Then Astrid also said that if Drago hurt Astrid and her friends, then Hiccup would attack him back. Astrid says that Hiccup is the son of Chief Stoic and is also his sole heir, and the best dragon expert in the world. Drago did not accept that and said that he was the only one who could control dragons. An angry Drago ordered his troops to attack Burke and kill Stoic so that he could control Burke. Then Drago ordered one of his men to kill Eret because he had made his base known to the Burke Vikings. Fortunately, there was Stormfly who protected him. The scene then moves to Stoic, who has managed to find Hiccup. As soon as he meets his son, Stoic immediately pulls him to go home. There Hiccup tries to tell his father about something, but his father ignores his son's words. Then Stoic met his wife, who had disappeared for 20 years. Stoic, who saw his wife, immediately removed the weapon he was holding and also his proud Viking hat. Even though his wife continued to talk, Stoic still walked up to her and held her cheek gently, which surprised Valka. Stoic said that Valka was still as beautiful as ever, and then the dragons began to retreat to give them some alone time. Meanwhile, Drago's troops still held captive Astrid, Eret, and their friends. Then Eret intends to free Astrid first by attacking the guards there. After successfully paralyzing all the guards there, Eret took him away to save his dragon Astrid and her friends. Then they entered a place. There Eret met Stormfly and thanked her for saving his life. 
On the other hand, Hiccup, Stoic, and Valka enjoyed their time together like any other family. They prepare meals together and also sing together. On the other hand, Toothless, who saw the intimacy of Stoic and Valka, closed his eyes. After that, Stoic proposed to Valka to become his wife again, and Valka was encouraged by Toothless to get closer to Stoic. They laughed happily and Valka also said yes to Stoic's proposal. Shortly after, Drago came to attack Valka's place and targeted all the dragons there. Seeing this, Stoic asked Valka to calm down. Then Valka asked Stoic to work with her to protect the dragons there and defeat Drago. One by one, the dragons that came out to attack Drago's army were captured by Drago. Drago ordered his troops to capture anything that emerged from the mountain. Soon Astrid, Eret, and her friends came to help with the battle. They started shooting at Drago's weapons and dragon traps. Then Drago ordered his troops to kill Astrid and her friends. Soon Hiccup came along with Toothless, followed by Bewild to join Astrid and her friends against Drago's army. Astrid then asked where Hiccup had been, and Hiccup replied that he had met his mother, then Valka came out along with Bewild. Astrid, who saw it, was quite surprised because Hiccup's mother could also be a dragon tamer. At the same time, Drago felt very happy because the Dragon King finally appeared. During the battle, Toothless began to show his skills by shooting Drago's weapons using his blast. Hiccup immediately praised Toothless because almost all of his bursts hit the target. While on the ground, Drago faced Valka. Drago, who did not want to lose, had prepared a dragon to match Bewild. It turns out that the dragon is something that Drago hid underwater and was suspected by Astrid. After the giant dragon emerged from the water, Valka immediately attacked Drago, but Drago easily overthrew Valka and intended to kill her. Fortunately, Stoic arrived in time and continued the manly fight with Drago. It turns out that Drago's dragon is one alpha race same as Bewild, except that Drago's dragon is black while Bewild is white. The two dragons were seen fighting fiercely, but unfortunately, Bewild was defeated by Drago's dragon. This makes all the dragons there so submissive to Drago's dragon. On the other hand, Stoic, who saw his wife fall from the dragon, immediately rushed to help her. At the same time, Hiccup tries to talk to Drago to make him realize it. Then here, Drago said that he wanted revenge because his family had died from a dragon attack on his village which burned everything there. Because of the dragon attack, Drago also had to lose one of his hands. Therefore Drago intends to conquer the dragon and then use the dragon to conquer other dragons. Then Drago showed what he meant to Hiccup. Drago summoned his alpha dragon then the alpha dragon controlled Toothless. He told Toothless to attack Hiccup. Toothless, who was under control, turned to attack Hiccup, and when Hiccup was almost hit by Toothless Blast, Stoic came to rescue him. Stoic, hit by Toothless's blast, immediately fell helpless to death. Hiccup, who did not accept that his father died, blamed Toothless, who had regained consciousness and sent him away. On the other hand, Drago's alpha began to influence other dragons to join Drago including Toothless. Here Hiccup not only lost his father but also Toothless. Seeing that Hiccup tried to chase Toothless, he was held back by his mother. After that, Hiccup performs a funeral ceremony for his father. After the funeral ceremony is over, he continues to blame himself. But after his mother comes, Hiccup realizes that he has to protect his people as the new leader. Then Hiccup, along with his friends, went to defeat Drago. Here Hiccup and his friends ride baby dragons who cannot be hypnotized by Drago's dragon and immediately go to Burke because, currently, Drago plans to attack Burke. Meanwhile, Drago, who had arrived at Burke, began hypnotizing all the dragons. Drago also told the residents of Burke that Stoic had died, and then Drago's alpha dragon attacked the residents with his blast. On the other hand, Hiccup and his friends who had arrived at Burke began strategizing to defeat Drago. He asked his friends to distract the dragon leader and try to keep the alpha from paying attention to Toothless. While his friends were trying to distract the alpha dragon, Hiccup met Drago, who was riding Toothless. Here Hiccup tries to awaken Toothless and his efforts are successful. Once aware, Toothless immediately threw Drago and returned to Hiccup. But as soon as Drago fell, Toothless also fell because he could not fly alone. Hiccup immediately caught up with Toothless, who fell and grabbed him. Then Hiccup closed Toothless' eyes and ears so he wouldn't be hypnotized again. Here they both attack the alpha dragon with the techniques they often use. After that, Toothless and Hiccup landed to reorganize their plans. But here, the Alpha Dragon tries to attack Hiccup using a blast on him. But Hiccup was saved by Toothless, who made Toothless freeze because an Alpha Burst hit him. Shortly after that, the ice block glowed and exploded. It turned out that Toothless underwent a power transformation. His body turned into a blue glow. Toothless then attacks the Alpha Dragon alone in order to protect Hiccup with his new greater strength. Unexpectedly, Toothless' attack on the Alpha made his hypnotic influence slowly disappear. Finally, the dragons began to realize and turn to attack the Alpha. This is where Hiccup shows the meaning of getting true dragon loyalty with love. But Drago, who was cornered, ordered the Alpha Dragon to attack Hiccup. 
Then Toothless attacks the Alpha by firing his blast, followed by the other dragons. The relentless attack defeated the Alpha and broke one of its horns. Finally, the Alpha chose to retreat. The battle was won by Toothless, which was greeted with joy by all Vikings in Burke Village. Because Toothless defeated the Alpha Dragon, Toothless will become the next Alpha and lead all dragons. It can be seen that all dragons submit to Toothless. Hiccup also thanked Toothless while the other dragons who had realized this also returned to their respective owners. Long story short, Hiccup becomes the new Viking chief replacing his late father, and the movie ends. The moral that can be learned from this animation is that we can learn with sincere love and always soften even hard hearts. Hiccup's sincere love for Toothless made him regain consciousness from the influence of Alpha Hypnosis, and finally, all the dragons turn to attack him. Taming animals with violence are never justified because forcing something is not good. But on the contrary, by taming animals with love and sincerity, you will get their loyalty.